Welcome to Real Talk with Reginald Day. I'm your host, Reginald Day. In today's episode, I interview with the host of Beyonce's Fingers. All right, Reginald, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, Aaron. Man, I really appreciate you having me on today. I'm very excited about the things that you're doing, and we're going to keep hanging out. But, man, I really appreciate you having me on. I'm really grateful. Not a problem. Not a problem. It's been great to be able to connect, and I'm glad to get into it because I feel like some of the questions that I have and your story is going to be pretty good for my listeners today, and I think your message and what you're about is also helpful. But today I have Reginald Sherman here with me, speaker, podcaster, and just following his call of God and doing his thing through podcasting. So it's great to connect with a fellow podcaster. Let's just hop into it. So you have a background, as in you were raised in the church, basically. Your father, and I believe I've also heard that your uncle or maybe your cousin was also a speaker as well. How did your upbringing kind of mold your perspective of life? Well, it was my grandfather who was pastor of multiple churches. He built his own churches. Yeah. Phenomenal man, you know, often as by trade. Uh -huh. So he built his own churches for the most part. And he was a remarkable man. His leadership was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of those guys. So he pastored a lot of churches mm -hmm. and he stopped pastoring. He retired at 72 years old, I believe. Got it. And he said that God called him to build another church. And then my grandmother was like, wow, we're going through this again. <laughs> you know, so he followed God's calling on his life and ended up building another church. but. Lo and behold, didn't know that my cousin was called to the ministry, mm -hmm. which is the pastor of the church now. Mm -hmm. And it's been phenomenal since then. I'm proud of what we've become and things like that. But I hold all of my success and my stories and my drive and my integrity to my grandfather and what he raised us. Yeah. So how did that upbringing kind of translate into you as an entrepreneur? Well, my grandfather had a store in the community. It was a convenience store, meat market, and all that kind of stuff. He, he only had a third grade education. Yeah. He just believed in who he was. And that's what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. You have to believe in you. Mm -hmm. If you have a passion, you have a drive, you have a desire, you have to believe that you can do it because everything you have is inside of you. Yeah. And you can get it done. People are just here to take chances in life. And if you're scared to take chances, man, I'm going to tell you something, Aaron. You're going to regret your life when it's all said and done. You got to take the chance. The people yeah. who are living the greatest life they could live right now, they took chances. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, it's like a quote they have saying, people that are typically on their deathbed and wishing that they had more money is the things that they didn't do, the things they were not able to do. Is that kind of like something that you live by? Yes, exactly. That is what I live by. You know, I'm blessed mm -hmm. to the point I can take care of my family and yeah. things like that. But at the end of the day, if I don't walk in who I am and change people's lives that I'm called to do, mm -hmm. to help people live a greater life, then I've failed all the way around. You know what? Great segue. I wanted to dive deeper into your story, right? You mentioned that you had a fight with suicide. And I'm, one, I want to say that I know that's a tough situation. And I want to say congratulations for overcoming, you know, surrendering to that feeling. Not only how did you do it, but you had a point where you said that you felt as if there were people that you were called to touch, which is one reason why you didn't submit to it. Do you feel like you've started to connect with those people? Yes. A lot of times when you go into situations in life, people have to understand where you can dig down deep inside of who you really are, mm -hmm. it's game changing yeah. for you. People make decisions because they don't know who they are, man. Yeah. They do things like suicidal things and drugs and all this kind of stuff to feel accepted. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you know who you really are and know why you're here, mm -hmm. then you can go anywhere in life you want to go. Mm -hmm. You just got to have direction. People have to have direction, man. Mm -hmm. They have to. If they don't, then guess what? If you don't have direction, guess what? You're driving your car, you have no direction. You're going to be lost. Yeah. 
with no map, no guidance. So why are you here? Tell me, you came to you, what spoke to you and what do you feel is your calling? Well, first of all, I feel like I'm here for a reason. Yeah. I was set apart. Bill God has a plan for my life. He's had his hands on my life, mm -hmm. all my life. And I can see that. I can see that. So what gives me the drive and do the things I do is because it ain't about ready to be. Mm -hmm. It ain't about me. It's about the people who are assigned to what I'm doing. I don't care about accolades. I don't care about the money. I don't care about none of that stuff, man. If I can just change people's lives, that is why I'm here on earth. At the end of the day, if it's all said and done, I'm laying in a casket somewhere. People can say that guy did it. Yeah. And how do you suggest people go about changing their lives or digging deeper and finding their purpose and their calling? Well, first of all, most people stay stuck on stop. Mm. You have these things that you want, but you don't want to change to get it. Yeah. People are afraid to take chances. They're afraid to change. In life, you have to shift, man. Aaron, you have to shift. Yeah. You know, you have to. Life is yeah. not going to be the same every single day. Exactly. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have challenges. But you got to shift. And I always tell people, in life, you don't have problems. You have challenges. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Problems have to be fixed. Yeah. Challenges have to be overcome. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying that basically the challenge never stops, but it can always continue to repeat. You always have this challenge maybe at a different point in life. Do you want to dig deeper into like the challenges and the difference between that and problems? Well. If you live a life full of problems, mm -hmm. then you have other things going on in your life. If your life is full of problems, people problems, all kinds of problems. You shouldn't have all these problems in your life. Yeah. Challenges should be the normal things that you deal with every day, that anybody deals with every day. Mm -hmm. I don't deal with a life full of problems. I don't deal with drama. Drama, problems, they're the same thing. Yeah. The challenge is going to call, but the challenges only makes you great and you're walking in what you desire for your life and what you're trying to get. You can't have problems in walking in what you desire for your life because you never get it. Yeah. Problems is derailing and usually problems start from people and things you allow in your life. Yeah. Challenges come from overcoming, you know, taking you to the next level. I'm here now. I got to take this thing to the next level. That's just a challenge. Yeah. But you're on the right track. So with being built up through challenges, and I know it requires belief. Now, this is a topic that I myself have been having quite a bit right now with a couple of friends. And it's the, the idea of faith, right? And also right. how belief is tied to faith. But some people believe that within belief, there's doubt. But within faith, it's the absence of both doubt and the absence of proof. Because you don't have it, it's unseen at the moment. Can you tell us about that? Like, how has your walk been with faith and how do you define it? Well, Aaron, I'm going to put it to you like this. Mm -hmm. People use faith two different ways. Okay. At least I do. Yeah. People say, I have faith in God that this thing is going to be what I need it to be. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand, God said we are joint heirs with him. We work together. So you got to have faith in yourself that you can get the things done that you need to get done. If you don't have faith in yourself, you're not going to make it, man. Yeah. You're not. That power inside of you, all this stuff has been instilled inside of you from the foundation of the earth, from God. And, but you got to utilize it. You got to have the faith in who you are. Because if you don't, you'll fail. You'll quit every time. What do you think? Do you think we are not only afraid of what we don't know, but afraid of what we may assume. Like when you're walking in faith and the people who really would like to accept that idea, maybe get excited about it, right? But the idea of walking and separating yourself from what you already know, I think caused some hesitation with people. Is that something that you feel as in why people just, we know what the power of faith, what comes with it. 
but yet we still sit back so we understand it, but yet we still don't accept it fully. Why is that? Because people are afraid of the unseen. Yes. They're afraid of the unseen. And what goes wrong with that is that you're looking at it through your eyes. You're not looking at it through your heart and through your potential. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at it through your eyes and what somebody else tried to do the same thing and they failed. But that ain't you. You built different. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that. I've had challenges in my life, man. I'd be like, I don't know if I could do this or whatever. But I realized, man, I'm just built there. Yeah. I'm built different. And I'm not scared of it. Yeah. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. So that's who I am. I mean, people got to learn. You got to keep pushing, man. You can't be, you can't be afraid. Yeah. You can't mm -hmm. be afraid. Because if you live your life afraid of purpose and things that you want for your life, you will never get it. Mm -hmm. You never get it. Do you, you think gotta the I... you got to overcome it. Okay. The questions keep coming. And as I hear you talk, I'm just like, all right, bam, I got another one because I love it when we can have conversations about it because I feel as entrepreneurs, right, we are taking one of the greatest leaps of faith. We are actually, to me, it's a great example of what faith is because we are building something that either has been unseen or at least unseen to ourselves. So this walk as an entrepreneur it definitely requires that building of faith or even the building of your spirit. And what hence why I call it beyond six figures, because I do believe that it's more than just money alone that makes you a great entrepreneur. And I can tell from listening to your story that your building of faith and how you've been able to reinforce it and also apply it has gotten you over a lot of the challenges. You are a man who has overcame a lot of things. One thing in particular I would like to know about, and I really like this when I heard it, I have to get to Rome. Can you tell me the significance of that and how you came about utilizing that as a, I guess you would say, an anchor of your faith or your belief? Well, that's one message I heard at church. And like I say, man, I come from a generation of pastors, preachers and things like that. And I've heard many sermons, yeah. many, but that was one that changed my life. Mm -hmm. Talked about Paul on his journey to Rome and he had all the stuff that was happening to him. He was bitten by the most bitter snake. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. And he was like, God, I ain't going to make it. And God said, Big courage. You got to see Rome. You must see Rome. Rome is the destiny that was set for him. Yeah. Everybody has a Rome in their life that you got to get to, but you can't let the challenges and the problems, the things you going through on your journey derail you. You've got to get there. It's already a sign for you. It's already sitting there waiting on you. But you got to push through it, man. You got to push through it in order to get there. And when you get there wrong, you're going to be like, hey, I made it. Yeah. Yeah. And tell me, with your growth and your experience, how have you defined the difference between spirituality and religion? And how has it helped? Well, spirituality is the connection between God and me. And that's what anybody. Religion becomes the church fact. Mm -hmm. You know, religion, it has its own way of doing things. It's structured. And I'll be honest with you. I tell people, I don't do religion. I don't do church. I go to church. I go to a phenomenal church. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to get there tomorrow. <laughs> but but the thing about it is that church, not all churches, but I've seen a lot of churches hurt people yeah. because of the structure. For instance, I was a part of this outreach team at one time. Mm -hmm. And one of the young ladies on my team called and said, hey, I'm at this house with this single mother with three kids. They don't have any food. She was picking them up to come to church. And I was like, where are you at? So I swung by there on my way to church. Walked in there. There was one jug of water in the refrigerator. That was mm -hmm. it. That was it, man. So we took them to church. After church, I went back to the finance room. And I was like, hey, I got a single parent with three kids out here. Don't have any food. I need a voucher because we had vouchers for the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. that you can go get food. 
where the man that was head of the finance committee said, hey, we don't give vouchers out to Tuesday. I said, well, what are you talking about? Oh, wow. I said, really? I said, man, they hungry right now. I said, what are you talking about? Tell them to come back Tuesday. I said, man, you full of it. Yeah. I've got a lot of other stuff I won't tell you right here. You know, <laughs> you're on the hey, you got a little crazy, but you know, that, that, that's who I am, man. That's my passion, you know? So, yeah. With all said and done, we got the food. Mm -hmm. We got the food. But she witnessed that back and forth with him and I. Mm -hmm. She never came back to the church. So, I'm over that kind of stuff, man. I'm a kingdom minded person. I do yeah. kingdom. I don't do church. Yeah. Kingdom people take care of the communities. Mm -hmm. Kingdom people help people. Yeah. That's what I do. So that religion thing, you know, I respect people who've been in church 50 years, 40 years, and all the stuff they do. I, I respect church and all that kind of stuff. But me, I'm different. I'm built different for it. I was actually speaking one time at this church. This pastor called me to speak at this men's conference he was having. So I went and I spoke. He called me that night and said, hey, I want to talk to you about something. And I was like, what is that? And he said that the way his congregation received me, he was willing to step down and give me his church. Oh, wow. And I was like, man, I don't want no church at all at all. They will run me out of here one week because I go in the community and feed everybody that's hungry. This church would be broke. <laughs> so I don't want to die. No, nah, man, I don't do church like that, man. I'm not built like that. So speaking of the men's conference, that's something I wanted to touch on because not only, again, your walk and your understanding of your calling, uh, being from one black man to the next, you grew up in a time that's way different from what I'm growing up in. And our generations definitely tend to always have some type of divide. There's a miscommunication there. But we also stand on the shoulders of you guys and the work that was done in the past. Now, I feel like more than ever, there's an opportunity for us to connect because we need it. Just not even on what's going on in the world, but also just spiritually as well. We need to understand how we ourselves can adopt some of the beliefs that we once had, some of the tradition. What do you think? some of the men of today need to know and what would be your message to them? Well, the thing about it, you have to understand the life, man. You got to know when to shift, Eric. Okay. You got to know when to shift. But as far as men, you have to walk in integrity. Yes. That's the biggest thing I learned from my grandfather and older generation that I looked up to. You got to walk in integrity at the end of the day. You can't just accept anything in life. You got to do what's right and you got to set what's right. And I'm willing and where I'm at right now, I'm 51. Mm -hmm. So Lessons. think about it. You young cats, y'all are heavy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mentor you all day long. Cause here's the thing. Here's the thing. The younger generation, they, they got their own thing, man. They got their own visions. They're so authentic with things mm -hmm. and we have to accept that. As we get old, we have to accept that. You have to get into a mentor role. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, let them go. Let them, they got the zeal. Let mm -hmm. them go get it. Yeah. Trust what they're going to do because they're going to take it to the next level. They're going to take it to the next level. I'm telling you, nothing goes to the next level without the younger generation. It will not move. And if you want to stay in that old school mentality in the church and the deacon doing the devotion and all that kind of crazy stuff and don't want to pray the Russian thing with the young folks, man, you're going to lose everything, man. If you want to hear that. Fair, fair. I remember being younger and Kirk Franklin came out at that point in time. And I have an uncle who's much older than I. He wasn't having it. He didn't even like that. So you can see the right. divide or the difference between the cultures and generation, even when new music or new ways of relating to the youth come about. How do you think we can do better within our community? Because more than ever, we need stronger men in these times and what's to approach? Well, what are some suggestions you have? Well, I think that as men, being a mentor mm -hmm. is the biggest thing you can do. Now, when I say a mentor, you mentor, not the person. Mm -hmm. You mentor the gift. Uh, 
That's the difference. Just being there for somebody because then they have a father figure, you tell them the right and the wrong thing to do and basically life. I mean, you can always do that, but you've got to mentor the gift. Mm-hmm. You have to. And a lot of people tell me I'm over top of what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, we're motivating people at what I do. I had a young man, I was mentoring him. Phenomenal motivational speaker. Phenomenal inspirational guy. Mm-hmm. And he had the young people on fire, man. On fire. He gave me a text one night and I was out of town. And told me he was quit. Because he had a lot of personal stuff that he was dealing with. So I got back in town. I showed up at his apartment at 2.38 a.m. Nothing on the door. Yeah. He opened the door. He was like, man, what's wrong with you? I said, no, we got to talk. You ain't quit. I ain't letting you quit. I see what's inside of you. I see the gifts. Hey, we got to keep going, man. You got to keep pushing. Yeah. No, I offered him coffee in his own house. He said, you want to cut coffee? <laughs> you know? And he was like, man, I'm going to bed. I said, well, I'm going to sit right here on this couch until you change your mind. He went to bed, Aaron. Woke up the this morning. I'm still on the couch. I said, I'm not letting you quit. I'm not letting you quit. So he gave in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you can't that's argue with that. that you also be coughing me in my own house. <laughs> right. Right. So he gave in. But the thing about it, I look over his life right now, man. He's been running for office. He's a politician, man. He's doing crazy stuff. Yeah. And you can't let people like that quit, man. Because who lied? You're going to affect if this guy quit. I saw all the lights he was touching. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about me. We weren't making any money. I wasn't making no money off him. Mm-hmm. But it was like, man, you got something going on, man. You touching these lives, man. You can't hurt these people. Yeah. And that's why I felt about it. And my passion is like that. I'm over the top. That's why I do what I do. I motivate people, man. I don't take no for an answer. I don't believe in quitting. I don't believe in none of that kind of stuff, man. I'm just crazy with it. I mean, people tell me I'm crazy with it, but I accept it. I accept it. At the end of the day, I am who I am. Exactly. Everywhere you are, everywhere you go, you are. It it is what it is. Like you're going to show up as you and you should in every situation. So how does one define their purpose if they're a loss? Well, I felt how you define your purpose is that you have to understand what is that thing that you always wanted to do? What is that thing you think about all the time? What is that thing you desire? Everybody does it no matter where you are in life. They think about, I want to be this. You watch TV and you see somebody on NFL playing football. You're like, man, I want to be this. I want to be that. You got to think about first, what is that thing that's pulling at you? Yeah. And then you got to tap into that. That's your purpose. If it won't turn you loose, man, that is your purpose at the end of the day. Yeah. And you have to go for it. Now, once you understand that, once you understand it, now you've got to work the process. Yeah. How do I get here? Yeah. And that comes with work. That comes with effort. Effort is only between you and you at the end of the day. If you fail, it ain't on nobody else but you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first time when you either felt God or heard God and received your purpose? I remember one time I was at, I was at a church actually, mm. and this lady came up to me and I did the speaking engagement, like in the back of the church. I wanted in the main congregation, Wait. they had these things going on and I was back there with some men and I was speaking in the back and this lady came up to me that I really respected. And she said, you know what? You're going to be salt mills one day. She said, you're going to be salt mills one day. She said, it's bigger than this place. She's talking about the church. Yeah. And I just accepted it, man. And I was like, wow. So I just That's- stepped it and went with it. And here it is. I, I'm not where I want to be. Trust me. Yeah. But I'm going to get there. <laughs> I'm going to get there. Yeah. And how do you, and how does one deal with that? As in recognizing where you would like to be, but also acknowledging where you are and that gap in between, does that cause anxiety for you? And how do you deal with that? Well, I'm not as young as you. You probably got a little more anxiety when it comes to doing stuff than I do. But, <laughs> but the older I get, the more patient I am with it. Gotcha. 
patience keeps me grounded. As long as I'm moving forward, yeah, I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Rome wasn't built in the day. Exactly. I understand that. And people get overwhelmed a lot of times because once you get a vision, it starts taking off and your mind starts to rot. Yes. I mean, it just starts rotting, man. You can't keep up with it. So you have to say, hey, hold on a minute. Let me take each step one at a time yeah. to get what I saw. But you can see the vision. Yeah. And then you're like, man, I got to get there. And all this stuff going through your mind, but it's all about process. It's all about process. And then you have to enjoy every moment when you're walking in your purpose. It's your purpose. It's best. Enjoy every moment. What you got to do. Don't get overwhelmed about the whole big vision and all that kind of stuff. Just enjoy every moment. Enjoy every little success. And that's how I keep myself grounded and keep anxiety down and things like that. So celebrate the small wins and understand that it's a part of the process. Okay. And so there's another significant story or speech that you've heard. I ain't got nowhere else to go. Can you dive deeper into that and tell me what did you pull from that message and how has it kind of shaped your life? Another sermon that I listened yeah. to that changed my life was talking about the people that was led by Jesus and things got hard and things like that. But mm -hmm. when you understand this about life, mm -hmm. when you really understand it, that, hey, I ain't got the worst to go, man. It makes you stay focused. It makes you keep going. Mm -hmm. If people feel like they got choices, well, I can go back and do this. I can go back and do this. It, then they're going to be all over the place. They're going to yeah. keep going backwards in life. But you feel like this is all I got, then you're going to appreciate it and you're going to work it. Yeah. I don't give myself options in life. I don't. I don't have nowhere else to go but do what I do. I don't give myself no options. I can do anything I want to do. Exactly. But I don't give myself options, man. I ain't got nowhere else to go but do what I do at the end of the day. And that's it. I mean, I don't care how tough it gets sometimes. I don't care how tough life gets sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm not turning back. Yeah. I'm not turning back because I don't want to go back where I came from. Exactly. So I'm doing pretty good. So I'll keep going. Okay. And to kind of expand on that, where are you heading towards now? What's next for Reginald D? And we'll talk family. Well, the real talk with Reginald D has been taken off way, way faster than I thought the podcast yeah. itself. Next move is to hit the state. Okay. Motivational speaking. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing we're working on and trying to get that accomplished mm -hmm. and see where it goes. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. Okay. But when you look at it, today we looked at it, I was writing the 24 country, the bottom Man. handbook. Yeah, and like the top one percent globally. The top one, yeah, I saw that. I Three saw billion. that. Yeah, so it ain't all me, man. God got me on this thing. I'm in my purpose. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, so I just got to be strategic and make the next moves and go to the next level. Cause you know, life is at stake, man. That, and that's what I'm out here for. To and that, like, give somebody direction. That thought process that is life's being in stake. Those are people that you need to touch, that you've been sent to touch. I can see how that can be also a motivator, but also a heavy kind of load to carry. But I'm glad that you're feeling like you're getting to those people. What else do you want those people to know? And how do you look to guide them? Well, you spoke on something. You said that it could be a heavy load to carry. Yeah. It was a heavy load to carry for me for a long time because I wasn't doing it. Yeah. It was on me, but I was just procrastinating. Mm -hmm. And then once I got into it, once I got into it and I would get feedback of people, you changed my life, things like that, man, that it lighted a fire in me. Yeah. And I was like, I can't quit. Mm -hmm. I have these people listening to me. Something has happened. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure that I stay in this thing to help change people's lives for the better. Everybody deserves a great life. They just don't know how to get to it. Mm. They don't. You got mm. great people in the world still suffering because they don't know how to change. They don't know how to handle life. They let life handle them. Mm. And that's the difference. It's your life. 
got to handle it. You got to manage it. Yeah. No, you got to be happy. You got to do what you got to do for you at the end of the day. So I'm honored by it, man. I'll tell you what, I don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. I don't take it lightly. I look at it like I'm a doctor in a room to perform a surgery. These yeah. people lies in my hand. That's how important I take this. Man, and that's serious. And I can tell that not only the past experiences and your upbringing has brought that into your style, but also I get remnants of other motivational speakers that I hear or listen to. Could you tell me some of the people, aside from your grandfather and your cousin, who are some other motivational either speakers or other authors that you may have read or listened to that kind of helped guide your thinking? Well, I listen to a lot of them. And I'm going to be honest with you. I love them and I like them. Yeah. But on my own, I think itself, man, when I listen to them, I was like, they fire now. Don't get me wrong. Aaron Thomas, <laughs> E.T., all these cats, they fire, yeah. man. But when I do my own thing, when I do me, I'm yeah. like, man, I'm not them. You're not I'm them. my own me. Yeah. I just love the passion that they bring and the things like that and the insight and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, I have recognized that I am my own authentic Reginald D. I'm my own brand. And that's the only way it should be. Right. That is the only way it should be. Well, Reginald, I like to do this thing called hot three, a quick three questions, a quick round and answer them however you feel. And then I also want to leave the last two minutes to give you an opportunity to speak to the audience and your last message. Now, that sounds good? I'm good. Okay. All right. So, first question. What is the last book you read? The last book I read was Politics of Jesus. Politics and Jesus. Let's go. Okay. And three minutes left on earth. What song are you listening to? I am. I am. By who? I don't even know who it's by. But I am. It's a rap song. It's a motivational song that I listen to on my workouts. Okay. And it says, I am. And whatever you put behind that is what you're going to become. Yes. Yes, And that's sir. what they talk about. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to have to research this and I'm going to have to figure this one out. And if you could play any instrument, what instrument would that be? <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I come from a generation of pastor preachers and musicians. We don't read music. Come on now. Let's go. So, so what do you want me to play? It sounds like I can put anything in your hand and you'll play it. Okay. Now, 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 I'm not as good as most of my cousins. I got a whole bunch of cousins and stuff, man. They raw with it. But I would say acoustic guitar. Okay. I like that. Melanie. Okay. And then the last two minutes, what is a message or something that you want to relate to the audience? You got it. Well, I want to let people know that life is not over for you. Yeah. No matter what you're going through in life, it's not over. You just have to tap into the real you. You have to believe in yourself. Nobody else is going to believe in you like you believe in yourself. They're not. So you got to understand and learn how to live the best life you can live. You have to make yourself happy, whatever that is. And a lot of it comes with change. You can't be afraid of change. Because if, if you don't change, you're going to live the same life you've been living. Your life wasn't meant to be miserable. Your life wasn't meant to be less than. Your life was meant to be great. And you have to understand that and put that in your mind. Why did God create you? Did he create you to be a failure? Did he create you to not have this thing called life? Why would he put in all that work for you not to have the best life that you can have? It doesn't make sense. It's on you to make the change and do what you need to do for you. If you do the things that you need to do for you, you will change generations. You will change people who's connected to you. It ain't all about you. It's all about your kids. Some people got grandkids, got all of the stuff. If you do what you need to do, leave that legacy. Leave that legacy. 
And don't be afraid of taking chances, man. Don't do nothing crazy. Don't take crazy chances. But this life is not meant for you to suffer. It's not. It's meant for you to gain. And you got to understand that. You have to tap into who you really are. Success is inside of your belly. Success is in your mind. It's there. Believe in the success that's inside it. Trust me. When you believe in you, can't nothing stop you. It can't. It's game changing. Yes. Yes. All right. And Reginald, can you tell the people where they can find you and how they can reach out for you and what you have next? Well, you can reach me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the call with Reginald Dean. So check me out. I appreciate it and things like that. We're going to keep going on this journey together. I feel like this is a journey. You know, that's what keeps me in it. It's not like once a week I'm speaking to somebody and that's it. It's like a journey. And as things come to me, I give it to my listeners and things like that. So I'm excited about this journey. We're going on and we're growing together at the end of the day. We're growing together. And then, like I say, the next thing is to get out here and do some motivation, speaking and do some conferences and things like that. So I'm excited about that too. I'm excited about the next level, but I'm more excited about the people that is listening to me and the lives has been transformed through what I'm talking about in my teaching. I don't look at myself like I'm this philosopher and all this kind of stuff. I'm just me. I have a gift and I realize I have a gift. So I have to use it. If I don't use it, then I'm letting myself down, I'm letting God down, and I'm letting the people down. Because mm. I understand that it's a lot of people, such as yourself, touching people. But we can't touch everybody. You have to understand that there is a set of people, and this is the way I feel every day I get up. There is a set of people that's out there hurting, waiting on me. So I have to do what I got to do. If I don't show up, what's going to happen to him? And I continue. continue. So I just take that burden with me every day. And then I'm going to do the best I can with what I got, man. That's, the, that's how I am. Word. Well, there you have it. There it is. Check him out on all platforms. And also check out his podcast, Real Talk with Reginald D. It's been amazing. We've been able to go over faith, his history, and what he has coming up next and his walk and journey with God and what he's doing with his podcast. So Reginald, I really appreciate you being here today. I'm going to continue to tap in on the podcast and follow the journey. And thank you, my man. Well, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you, Aaron. Yes, sir. Blessings. Same to you. Thanks for tuning in with Real Talk with Reginald D. If you enjoyed the show, please share with anyone you think that needs to go on this journey with us on making you a better you. See you next time.